All right, what's up everybody? It is Zombies here again, and today we've got another Mercenaries team comp for you. So today we're going to be trying out some Shadow Pirates, featuring some of the new Pirate Mercenaries that were added just a few days ago. Now, I have been very, working very hard on the grind, trying to get these guys up so I can use them for PvP and videos and stuff. Um, Eudora's almost there, got all her abilities maxed out except for her two other items. Um, you can see what we're using on her is primed armaments, battle cry summon a cannon. So a little bit of info about that. The cannon is a 018 at its max level, and at the end of your turn, deals 15 damage to the mercenary or mercenaries that are across from it. Um, she also has some abilities that involve either firing the cannon or summoning another one. Um, overall, I think Eudora is a really interesting character, and in the game or two I tried so far with this, um, it felt very strong. The only thing is, cannon positioning is definitely tricky at times, especially uh, when you have to factor in Edwin with the other pirates, because on Edwin we're running Black Flag so that you get faster abilities for your adjacent pirates, because you want Eudora to be super fast. Um, at least that's the idea here. Um, so that's kind of what I focused on upgrading for him first. Got that all maxed out, and it's been pretty strong. As you can see, I'm still leveling up his abilities, as it does take a little while longer to get them leveled, because Edwin is the only legendary out of the new set, and unfortunately his coins aren't quite as common. But even with only leveling his main abilities up a little bit so far, he's still been pretty decent. Um, Definitely Assassin's Blade and Assass Assisted Strike are the main two you're going to be using because um, even though this is a pirate comp, um, usually you only have two pirates on the board at a time instead of three with a few rare exceptions to that. So Kingpin's Bounty isn't really the main move you're going to be focusing on so I wouldn't worry about upgrading that one right away for him. Um, then we have King Mukla. Basically, Mukla's role on this team is taunt. Um, basically, if you've been playing on ladder, you may have seen a um, few other comps outside of the beast comp have started running Mukla, and I think the main reason for that is he's just a really good uh, Samuro counter. Mukla's big brother just really kind of shuts down Samuro turn one, making sure he can't get a sneaky quick kill off of one of your units, or a lot of damage at the very least, especially with comboing with another merc like Zyrella. So he's really good at that. And then, honestly, the, uh, the additional stats granted by his bananas can be surprisingly relevant, and the fact that you can also use Mukla as a taunt with his other ability um, if Mukla's big brother dies. Also another cool interaction here. So Eudora, her covering fire ability, restore 12 health to a friendly merc and return them to your bench. Fire all your cannons. So this is a really cool ability because it may look kind of not the best at seven, but you do have to remember most of the time, or at least when you're starting out, you're gonna have Edwin next to her, so that's reducing all the speed of these moves by four. So her first move is actually zero speed, which is really insane when you think about it, because that's an attack plus damage from a cannon, which you're guaranteed to have at least one of on the starting turn due to her battle cry. But the reason Coveting Fire is so good and how it kind of combos with this team um, is basically you can use that on King Mukla or Eudora and then just immediately redeploy them and their battle cry will go off again, giving you either another cannon or another Mukla's big brother. And that actually combos with our last unit, who we almost always save for last year in Sylvanas, because Sylvanas, basically you want to get out Reclaim Souls, because that plus five attack is each friendly character, not mercenary, so that counts all your summons. Um, which is honestly a pretty fair amount, so you find a lot of the time you end up getting 40 plus total attack on Sylvanas, if not higher, just by using this once at the end of the game. And then with her equipment, Death Volley, you can almost always guarantee that if they do kill your Sylvanas, she'll be wiping their board or killing most of it and leaving everything else very severely damaged. 
Um, this also can actually turn some games you would otherwise lose into a draw, which is nice because you don't actually really lose much MMR for that. Um, Mr. Smite, he's the uh, the last new pirate we've got here. So I think a lot of people are actually sleeping on Mr. Smite. The, the whole thing about him, in my um, limited experience with him so far, Overboard is insane. If you can set this ability up where you have one or two other pirates on the board um, and you know your opponent's going to try and AoE you with like Karrion or Diablo, Barden, any AoE mercenary. Um, if you know they're going to do that, you can actually get this off at zero speed if he's next to Edwin. So I usually have him on the bench, bring him in after my first Merc dies, and... The reason this is so insane is by itself it's good because it does give you plus 10 health and can enable a lot of attacks during a turn but the reason it becomes really strong is heavy anchor in my opinion so i only have it at level two right now hopefully i'll get it all the way up there soon but the whole thing with heavy anchor is instead of just gaining plus 10 health you're also gaining plus four attack if the damage friend is a pirate so this is really huge when you have a scenario where King Mukla dies and you still have Eudora and Edwin on the field. You can get out Mr. Smite. Usually Eudora and Edwin will take a hit and then because you got this off beforehand, it'll lead to a lot of buffing and attacking and it triggers on whenever they take damage. So if they take damage when they attack, as well as when they're getting attacked, that'll trigger an additional buff and an additional attack. So it's really kind of an insane combo if you can get it off right, but it's definitely something you have to be careful about timing. Um, his other abilities are good too. I do like having um, basically guaranteed easy taunt that also buffs his attack. Um, he can really get out of control with the scaling if you time his attack buffs well and can keep him alive. And then our last unit here is Vol'jin. So Vol'jin is our other shadow unit here that synergizes with Sylvanas. Vol'jin's just a good unit on its own. Really good revenge killer. Um, he's the kind of unit you want to bring in where when your opponent has a, a low HP board, maybe they just picked off one of you to your mercs and you've got a lot of damage on their board already but you just kind of need a little bit more to get there finish off some of their mercenaries Vol'jin's really good for that because ring of haste obviously giving you that shadow abilities being three speed faster and that also combos with sylvanas because her abilities are shadow abilities so that can increase her speed passively if Vol'jin is out which is great because i find they usually are out at similar time in the late game um, and other than that, he's just really good AoE damage. So that's a general overview of what we got going on here. Let's see if we can find some games with it. And looks like we've got ourselves a game. All right. Three casters, two fighters, one protector. In theory, that should be good for us. So... Edwin, Dora, Makla. Start out like that. Alright, we got Samuro, Arden, Zyrella. I think that's actually quite good for us. I think we move here, get a cannon out. Oh, this is tough if we want it to go. I think we do want it to go to the left so it doesn't mess with our speed bonus. Um, we go for Varden with the attack because there's a chance we speed tie. And we move the cannon in. Alright, so cannon spawned. Yep, that makes sense. Alright, so I won the speed tie, which is great. Let's get some extra damage off of Varden. Alright, 
So, this means I can now either kill Zyrella, which is actually really good, because if I kill Zyrella, then Samuro won't be able to swing twice this turn. Yeah, honestly, that seems really good. So, let me make sure that math adds up. 30, or no, um, no, 10, so that's 20, and then 30, so it's only 50, actually. Or it'd be 40 against uh, Samuro. Hmm. So, I think we definitely have to taunt the Mukla. I mean, I think it still does make the most sense. Or, let's see, restore to him. Fire all your cannons. Honestly, it's almost tempting to to do this on herself. To get another cannon spawn. And you're still getting good damage off with the cannons. I think I do want to just guarantee that he dies. And we're going to go for the combo. I think that looks good. Boom. Boom. Alright, so he got that off first, so unfortunately my goal is going to die. Edwin. I mean, Edwin's not the worst to get frozen there, but... He's also not the best, because he could have frozen our cannons. Um, just makes sense to throw Bulgin out as a quick revenge kill, I think. Although, it's also low-key tempting to do Mr. Smite, because if he goes for the immune play, I mean, he won't even get a chance to, because I'll be faster. I think, yeah, I think I'm going to just go with Mr. Smite. Alright, so Karen is fine. So, I think we definitely want over Overboard. Because that can snowball super hard. Now the question is, I think it just makes sense to kill the Samuro, even if we're going to take some damage from it. Could also be interesting trying covering fire. But if he focuses me with the Zyrella, that wouldn't be good. I think we just want to get as much damage off on the board as possible because we do have uh, Bulgin who can come in and sweep up. Now the cannons, it's really tough with the cannons because I don't think you really want to move them because even though the damage is nice, I do think the, the speed buff is very important right now, especially depending on what's in his back comp. We'll see what he did. So we get that off first. Boom, boom, good. Yeah, look at all these triggers, jeez. Okay, so that was, I mean, <laughs> that was super interesting. Didn't go how I expected it to, but did not end badly. Although now Diablo's gonna come out. Yep, that's, that's good. Um, So Vol'jin can revenge kill, but Diablo's going to gain a boatload of health, which is bad. Well, we can guarantee the kill on Zyrella. At the least, our other units are probably going to die. But that is okay. Might as well attempt to move these in, but probably doesn't really matter. Yeah, I can't wait for them to 
uh, it's not really a nerf, but you're going to be changing Karen, so you can't do that. Uh, when it dies, if it dies before it acts in a turn and then reincarnate happens, it won't get that attack off, which I think will be a pretty substantial and honestly much needed uh, kind of nerf to carrying. Um, th the dev said it's not intended behavior, so I don't know if I'd exactly call it a nerf, but um, I do think that is the kind of part of the intention there, is that's just way too strong. Rightfully so. Like, Karen's running like pretty much 9 out of 10 compositions right now, and it would be nice to see a little bit more variety by not having to always rely on him. So that is certainly an interesting choice from the opponent. Job's done. I mean, it makes sense to focus the Mulligan to an extent, but what was the last move he used? Was it Apocalypse? No, it was Reclaim Souls. So that's actually good, because I think that screws up Blink Fox. So we can snipe Blink Fox, slow the Karen. Job done. That's going to be really close again. It's just, Diablo gains so much freaking health from killing our spawns. That's the only downside about the cannons right now, is with all the Diablo running around, if he comes in at an unopportune time, it can definitely be troublesome. How does he still have the bananas? I don't understand that. I don't understand why I was slowed so much either, but it doesn't matter because I'm gonna fucking lose to this bullshit. Ah, <sighs> oh, it's so annoying losing to that stupid shit. Let's see what we've got here. So it looks like a fighter focus comp. So I'm guessing that means beasts. We shall see. The Brotherhood shall yep. We have beasts. So I've faced beast comp a few times with this team. Um, and one thing I have noticed for sure is that unfortunately the cannons are a little bit of a, a downside in this matchup because basically you give King Crush a free kill and you can kill them very easily. So I think we do it to focus Big Brother, get him out of the way. Move the cannon. Damage crush. And I suppose hit Mukla. Yeah. Job's done. Unfortunately with the the beast comp buff, it doesn't die. It's just our attack. Killer. This is not the greatest position to be in. Taunt doesn't really matter. Yeah. Well, 
Well, I guess the meme was good there. Now we can throw down two mercs instead of just one. Probably want Vulgen. So this is interesting. I think we want Mr. Smite too. Alright, so we're going for the AoE damage. Is it worth going for a faster speed attack? It would outspeed Crush. But my Kingspin Bounty is super low. It's the lowest ability I have on him. So it doesn't really do a whole lot of damage. You only deal 8 damage. It's like nothing. So it's probably just best to go for the attack. Um, the question is, do I go for game 5 attack for each enemy of 40 or less health? Right, so that would be 11, so that's 22. So that'd be enough, although he's going to take a lot of damage from the crush. But there's not really any other way I can avoid that. So I think I just have to do it. Oh, uh, yes. Well, I mean, all things considered, that actually wasn't so bad. I ended up with Mr. S Mr. Smite being more uh, more healthy than he would have been otherwise. Now, I do wonder if it's worth. I think it is worth summoning Eudora here because she, even though she has low health, we get that cannon battle cry, give us some more buffs on Sylvanas. So that can be good. Get the AoE damage going. Overboard kind of seems insane here if Diablo goes to the AoE. Which I feel like he will. Um, is there any benefit to attacking? Might as well. Hit Diablo. Move this inward. It's definitely uh, definitely going to take some getting used to this comp because there's a lot to think about with these cannons. Um, definitely depends on your opponent's comp because they can be really good sometimes, not so great other times. Okay. So there goes Rexar. Oh, there goes Diab. Oh my god. <laughs> Mr. Smite. Wow. Holy crap. <laughs> Diablo counter? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> that was insane. Yeah, jeez. Like, I'm not really sure how, uh, how they're going to come back with that. <laughs> like, I don't think they can. What do you have in the back? Blink Fox? Yeah, I don't think that's going to do it. Like, you're, you're in trouble, friend. Wow. Yeah, he's done. Wow. Yeah, okay. Mr. Smite, just smiting him down. That's what you love to see. Alright, looks like we got ourselves another game here. Alright. What are they rocking? Alright, so it looks like this could be another beast comp. So we're going to lead with what we led last time. The Brotherhood shall... Yeah, that was uh, that last game was really nuts with Mr. Smite. Alright, so I do like seeing Cyril Samura leads here. Because I think we stack up pretty well against it. The question I have though is who do we want to focus? Honestly, it might even just be right to focus Tavish. Because the AoE is going to mess us up a bit. And if we can kill him, let's see how much damage we can do. So 9 and 15, so that's 24. 
Edwin attacks twice. It's 48, so we need another 40. Mukla. I guess let's try it. If nothing else, we leave him really, really weak. So he can be cleaned up shortly after. Because I just don't think... Samuro's not as much of a threat as he normally would be against a start like this. Because he doesn't have any casters to one hit or two hit kill. Yeah, so far I've been liking the start. It's felt pretty good. Um, there are definitely some comps that can be tricky. Like uh, I've run into Holy Comp with Anduin, uh, Velen, and Mukla. And sometimes it works great against it, sometimes it doesn't work great against it. Um, probably part of that is just learning how to play it a bit better. Obviously, you know, these mercs are all super new, and I don't have them all maxed out yet. So they're not going to be doing quite as well as they would be if, obviously, all their abilities and stats and stuff were leveled. Um, but hopefully it won't take too long to do that. So this is where you can see the speed boost from Edwin is really huge because now I have the opportunity to actually kill his Tavish before he even gets a chance to lay the explosive trap, which I think is just absolutely gigantic. Um, I do think we want to go with the assisted strike here, mainly because there's a chance we get to hit Zyrella, and if we don't, we're at least not taking damage from hitting the Samuro. I think it's fine leaving the cannon where it is. Um, yeah, I think that makes sense. And it's tough to say. I think we want to taunt the Mukla here because he's probably going to focus it with Cyrella Samura. So we don't want to be attacking with it. Yep, that's great. Oh. Interesting. So he focused Edwin instead. But why didn't my did my taunt not go off? I wish you could scroll this. Okay. I'm just confused why what happened with Buckla there. But that's alright. Um let's see. Probably makes sense to just throw in Mr. Smite. He's going to be slower, but I don't think that's too much of a concern. Interesting he decided to focus Edwin. Alright, so... 15 plus 20. Not enough to kill Zyrella. It is enough to set up, set her up to die next turn, though. Overboard just seems like the move. Honestly, I think I do just want to attack. And... I think it makes sense to attack here, just because uh, it could get another trigger for Mr. Smite. Yeah, he's really unassuming, like... That uh, that overboard ability, he, he just scales so quickly. Yeah, like, look at this. That's just, yeah, like, AoE countered, but, like, holy crap. That's just nuts. Like, yeah, wow. Like, how do you come back from that? Like, <laughs> So, so Mr. Smite's really proven to be a, a valuable kind of AoE counter here. Um, do I want to move my units around at all? I think I want to leave the cannon in the middle. Yeah, I think this is fine. Diablo drag. Alright, I think that's okay. We go for the hit. I think we just have to go for the hits on Diablo. Um, 
and maybe in the off chance we can get some I think the healing might be more valuable than damage here especially with the battle cry so I'm just gonna attempt to well he does hmm. I think we just do this and do we leave where do we leave this I think we want it hitting the middle if one of our guys dies Yeah, Rag Diablo really good cool. yeah, force there. Um, I don't think it's gonna be an unstoppable. Alright, so we Vulgin, Buff Sylve. Let's see. Gonna be very close here. Makes sense. Pull into everything. Oh, unfortunately, I think we're pretty screwed. But did come close. So we really might just have to save that Mr. Smite ability. Um, okay. Yeah, we're dead. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I can't wait for Terry there. He's such a shitty fucking legendary. It's ridiculous how overpowered he is. Absolute dog shit. We've got ourselves another game. Alright, 2-2-2. Two, two, two. So we'll do our standard pirate lead here. The Brotherhood shall so we have a little bit of lag, I feel like I've noticed since the, the patch hit. At least in mercenaries when I've been Deploying my units in PvP, I know sometimes there's a little bit of lag. So hopefully they get that ironed out. Nature! Um, I think we should be favored against the nature comp, to be honest. Because, let's count some damage here. So... We really want to kill Malfurion, because um, he is obviously the backbone. So let's see, 9, so it's 24, 24, 24, 48. So I think, yeah, we just go all out on Malfur. Let's see how that does. Traditionally, that just seems to be the best line, in my opinion, for dealing with nature comps, because Malf just snowballs really hard. There's gonna get some healing off. But I think we'll be able to kill him next turn. Please give the muckle a banana. Oh my god. That's actually really annoying. Because <laughs> because he didn't give the muckle a banana, muckle died. Um, I mean, I guess it's not that bad. Because now we can revenge kill easier with Vol'jin. So I suppose all things considered, that's not that bad. Done. 
because now we can easily get our revenge kill off. And let's see, 20 and 15 is 35. I think it makes sense to go immune. Especially because he's going to outspeed. I think we want this to move over one. And go there. Job's done. So I'm guessing Karen Diablo back end. I think most people are running. But here we see the benefit of that speed. Trying to focus Edwin. Interesting. Yeah, so he's gonna carry Diablo me right now. Which is going to be annoying for certain. He's not going to be fast enough to, uh, I'm still going to get some damage and stuff off beforehand. Edwin's going to die, Mukla's going to die. A lot of stuff's going to die, but I think it might be okay. We'll see. Now I can go Mr. Smite. Samuro, eh? Interesting. I think Overboard makes sense. Question is... Honestly, covering fire kind of makes sense to redeploy. Because the damage I'm going to be doing otherwise isn't a whole lot. I mean, I could summon a cannon, but I'm basically summoning a cannon by doing this anyway. So. I think I'd rather have the help of my mercenary if possible. Okay, so Diablo's dead, so that's actually huge. That's actually huge. I have no time for games. So yeah, we're just gonna buff up Sylv. And we're going to see if we can kill his Samuro here. I hear and obey. Yeah, that should be a wrap. Yep, opponent knows it too. GG. Very nice. Creeping back up to 7k. Definitely took a little bit of a rating hit first few games with this, because it does take a little bit of uh, getting used to to play, for sure. And I still do have to max out these guys, but definitely fun and pretty solid. I honestly think when I get them fully maxed out, it's going to be a pretty good team. I mean, it seems pretty good right now, honestly, but I think it's going to be even better, obviously. All right, guys, that's another game here. All right, three casters. Um, maybe it's holy. Let's see. The Brotherhood shall Yeah, holy might be would probably be my guess. But there are a lot of caster heavy comps, so hard to say for certain. Looks like it is not holy. 
but this is actually great for us. We really like seeing Samuro leads. And he's running a mirror image. That's good to know. So, question is, who do you want to focus here first? Um, I don't really think Samuro is the biggest must-kill threat. Honestly, Zy killing Zyrella might be the move. Um, or Varden. The slow on Varden is annoying. But is it more annoying than Zyrella? Is the question. Since Samuro doesn't threaten us quite as much, I think we focus Varden. We also have a chance to win a speed tie there. We're going to hit uh, Mukla into Samuro though, because we do want to get some damage off on him. Um, Mukla's brother will probably die before he gets to attack, but that's fine. Yep, as expected. Um, I mean, actually, that's really not that bad. Job's done. Or is it? <laughs> Truthfully, I mean, I guess I would have preferred if, uh, if Edwin was frozen. Edwin or the cannon would have been a much better freeze. Because then, at the very least, I could taunt up Mukla. We're going to see what he sends out here, though. Hopefully not Ragnaros, but I'm guessing with only one protector, it's Karen, um, which would also be arguably pretty good in this position. And what are they sending? Whoa, Alex Straza. That's cool. I've. I think this is actually my first time seeing Alex Raza in PvP. Well, props to our opponent for bringing an inter interesting lineup. Definitely, uh, definitely was not expecting that. So you want a combo. The question is, do I summon a cannon? I think I do summon a cannon. Because he doesn't really have a convenient way of dealing with the cannons. Yeah, let's summon it. Uh, but the problem with summoning, it'd almost be better to retreat my unit. Or I could retreat Mukla. Yeah, that's actually, that's the play. I like that play. By retreating Mukla, I get Mukla's big brother back, and I get some health up on him. And some damage on the cannon. Okay, yeah, that was that was the move. That was most certainly the move, I think. Because um, now I'm in a pretty good position. Wait, 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 wait. Why is he still frozen? He better unfreeze. What? What? Are you kidding me? They keep the freeze if they go back to hand? That's ridiculous. Wow. Okay. I do not know if that's working as intended. That... I, yet that just doesn't... I'm, I don't understand how that works. Um, but sure. Whatever game. Alright. Well, that puts us in a bit more of a predicament. Makes things a little bit less easy. Uh, I think we still go to kill the... Well, how fast is he? His fastest move is three. I think we do just go for the kill. So strange. And yeah, like this. Jeez, yeah, that was. Uh, that, that I don't think that should work that way. 
That really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Alright, so he's got a green and a blue. I'm guessing he's going to send out the blue because we have red unit down. Or the green if it's Diablo. If it's Diablo, we want Mr. Smite out, I think. And I think we just have to send out Bolgen. Because Solanus needs to be our last unit. It is Diablo. It's scary, but not super problematic. Blink Fox. Okay. Sure. So this is going to go later in the turn. If we do, I need to do some math here. So 12, maybe a little bit more. Another 12, so 24, plus 14, 38. And we leave the cannon, I think. Can placement's hard because you kind of have to account for what could potentially die. Okay, killing the cannon. Healing. Yeah, that was uh that was a strange uh turn of events there. I mean, I think we just want to buff the attack again. Just buff our dudes and... I guess we should really focus the... Irella. Oh, we have an AoE coming now, but... It, yeah, it'll just be nice if we can kill it. I mean, we might go for the heal again, we'll see. Strange, I've never seen Alex Straza in PvP. I think she could be an R8 unit, it's just the the synergy isn't fully there yet. Maybe if we get some more dragons though, I really am hoping uh, we do get some more dragons, because very cool type. Alright, let's see what their uh, their last green here is. How it matches up with Sylvanas. Tavish. Okay, I think we're very favored then. Because now we kill his Alex. Um, I think he's just going to be going for damage. So I think it makes sense to do this. And then obviously we go for the attack buff on the Sylph. Explosive trap, yep, not super surprising. Okay, cool, cool. AoE. Well, that was a little unfortunate because I guess I didn't trigger with over. Hmm. Still not the biggest deal in the world though because now Blink Fox is going to die. I mean, I get what he's going for here. That's just not enough. Cool comp though. I do have to, to give him props for an original composition. Um, I definitely want to try some Alex Strauss myself, honestly, just because I actually just got her gold portrait. So, great excuse to try out a character. <laughs> and we've got ourselves another game. Two, two, two. Another one. The Brotherhood Alright. What are they running? Holy cow. Alright. 
Holy comp is interesting. Kill like that. Um, might actually make sense. Well, it's like I want to target the Anduin, but I will get more damage off if I target the Velen. Twenty-four. Still not enough. So I think I do just focus the Anduin then. Concerning. Oh, but it doesn't matter because I outspeed his taunt. Perks of being a pirate. I swing there, move the cannon there. And I think we just leave the. Uh... No, we attack. We attack. Because if his dude dies and he sends in Diablo, I don't want him gaining the health off one of my spawns. Yeah, you're in trouble now, bud. Wow. Very interesting. Job's done. So I could kill this first, but then Mukla gets a heal. I don't really want Mukla to get healed. Fastest speed he has is three, but that could speed his stuff up. It might just be worth killing the Velen for the heal. I could bounce, but I don't think I don't think that's as important. Maybe I just snipe him first. Honestly, I'm really let's just do this. Swing there, swing there, leave this. Attack Karen. Yes, this looks fine. And this is great, because now I can bait him into Diabloing, which he almost certainly has. And, in theory, this should wreck Diablo, at least from what prior matches have shown me. And Karen used Earth Stomp last turn, so he's going to use Speed Up this turn. But I still outspeed him, so I'll at least get some damage off. And yeah, this should be. I think this should be good. It's going to make my dude really big, and hopefully get at least a hit or two into Diablo. Alright. You don't have much of a choice, friend. You gotta you gotta send out both your guys. Maybe it's Tavish too. Did our opponent just leave? Maybe they disconnected. Yes, Tavish. That is fine. 
I think we want as much damage on Diablo as possible. Move this inward. Or wait, do we want to move this inward? Job's done. No. Leave it where it is. It is fine where it is. Yeah, I'm not sure if our uh, opponent left or disconnected or if they're still here. Rope is a burning. <laughs> Maybe they just had enough and decided uh, pirates were too much for them. <laughs> Rope is done. Do they have any actions? Nope. Okay, so they're either they either left or fully DC'd. So that's pretty unfortunate, to be honest, because um, this was like. Solid game up until the the DC or the light or the leave or whatever it is. Um, I still think it would have been fine though. Like, what does Tavish really do against our last guy? As long as we can kill Diablo, which really shouldn't be a problem or shouldn't have been a problem. Like, because he probably would have wiped out our cannon and our two pirates. But we would have got a lot of buffs and some damage in. We have taken some as well, but I think it would have been fine for setting up the Vol'jin, Sylvanas, endgame sweep. Oh, looks like our opponent came back and conceded. So that must have been a disconnect or something on their part. Because um, I don't think they would have... I think it would have said they left otherwise. All right, so just to do a little wrap-up overview here, my experience with the team so far. Um, definitely had some really good games with this. A lot of fun to play. Definitely one of those uh, comps that I think there's a lot of potential here for it to be rather strong. Um, but I think out of all the ones I've played so far, this is definitely one of the more kind of skill testing and you kind of have to think about positioning a lot in this composition. So it is not the most straightforward to play. The cannon positioning can be super duper important and it can be somewhat tricky to calculate sometimes because you do have to kind of be good at predicting what your opponent's going to do in terms of uh, if they eliminate one of your units or multiple of your units, how that's going to change where your cannon's located. And then also keeping in mind, you don't want to put a cannon between Eudora and Edwin if you can avoid it, because then that messes up uh, his passive adjacent pirates being faster. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, definitely feels like one of those comps that I'm going to have to play it quite a few times before I really get the full hang of it. Um, and also I do have to fully level up these abilities. Now on Eudora and Mr. Smite, I do have their regular abilities maxed, um, so that's good, but Edwin definitely still got some work to do with him before he reaches his full potential, but even not being fully leveled right now, he still felt pretty good. I, th I do think definitely the best thing about him is probably just that, that passive speed buff, but he is still a solid beater in his own right, especially in this kind of sorcerer heavy meta. He can deal quite a good bit of damage. Um, Mr. Smite really uh, kind of overperformed my expectations. Um, seeing overboard in action when you can time it right is just absolutely insane. And I think this could be another kind of potential counter to Diablo Karen because those are obviously very AOE focused uh, mercenaries. And if you can time this right, you can totally mess them up, almost wipe out their whole board like we, we saw in one, one of the earlier games. Sylvanas really just done an incredible job of filling her role um, at the end of the game, just dealing a ton of damage, can enable these like totally kind of reverse sweeps, 
and Bulgin did basically exactly what we were expecting of him in terms of reverse killing. Um, really, overall, I think I'd recommend this comp, especially if you're seeing uh, a lot of Samuro and Samuro Zyrella comps, um, which I know are definitely popular with a lot of people because they are totally free to play, so you don't actually have to own any other mercenaries to play those, which is nice. Um, so if you're seeing a lot of Samuro, definitely recommend trying this out as a way to kind of counter that because I think almost every game I've gone up against a Samuro comp, it's, it's been pretty favorable for us so far. So I'm going to do some more testing and leveling with this in the future, and I'll definitely uh, come back to it with some more results and stuff. But for now, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Peace.